Hello and welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. Uh, today we're going to do some different stuff. Uh, it's um, controls and tools inside a Lightroom that veer a little bit into Photoshop type stuff. So we're not working necessarily on the whole image, we're just going to work on selective parts of the image. So uh, what I've shown you so far is called global edits. These will be called selective edits. Before we begin, let's do our dad joke. Our dad joke is, you know, I, I wanted to tell you a, a, a joke about boxing, but I couldn't remember the punchline. Punchline? Boxing? Punch? Boxing? All right. Get it? Get it? All right. Sorry. I don't know about you, but these days, um, every day feels like Sunday and Monday at the same time. So uh, I think I'm recording this on a Tuesday. Anyway, <laughs> hello. Uh, so, uh, I want to show you, we're going to do uh, a two-part video today, a video in two parts. The first part will cover uh, one of the tools I'll show you, and the second video will cover the second tool. So this first tool I'm going to show you, which is, I think, pretty magical. And uh, I use it quite often. It's really wonderful. Uh, and once you learn how it works, man, it makes your photos um, really oftentimes stronger because it simplifies. It helps uh, remove distractions. It helps point your um, viewers to your subject. So here's what I mean. So uh, let's go over to Lightroom and let's take a look at this photo. So in this photo, um, as I look at this photo, I'm looking right here and I'm seeing a distraction. In my perfect world, if there was a way to remove that before I took the photo, I would. Um, I don't think I really saw it when I was taking the photo, and even if I did, that's something I can't move. It's out in the water, this buoy. But wouldn't it be nice if it could be gone, if it was removed? And of course, the answer is yes. And wouldn't it be awesome if we could do it in Lightroom? And of course, that answer is yes as well. So, boom. <laughs> this is kind of cool, huh? Kind of cool. So this tool, let's walk through it, never fear. I'll show you how it works. This tool is called the Spot Removal Tool, and it's in the toolbar below your histogram. Uh, in Lightroom, you have to be in the Develop module. I forgot to mention that. So you've got to be in the Develop module. Uh, by the way, these photos are on, um, on uh, Canvas in the module for class number, let's see, they'll be in the module for class number seven. No, wait, nine, class number nine. <laughs> are they in the module for class nine? Yes, class nine. Class nine, uh, you can find these sample photos. Uh, so you'll download them just like you did uh, for Lightroom 2 uh, and for uh, Lightroom number one. So go back to the module for class number four. Uh, watch the video on importing photos if you need a little help getting the photos from uh, Canvas to Lightroom. All right, so you're in Lightroom. You're all excited. You've got a photo and you love the photo, but there's something about it that bugs you, a distraction. So uh, this tool, uh, my nickname for it, uh, it's called the Spot Removal, as I mentioned, the Spot Removal Tool. I call it the Distraction Removal Tool. Uh, and that's often what I'll use it for. Getting rid of those little bits and things that uh, I either couldn't remove, like this buoy, or I didn't quite notice uh, when I was taking the photo. And that's pretty common. Uh, even as, uh, as you get started in photography, you'll you'll be so excited about the subject, you won't see all the stuff around it, and then when you get to the screen, you're like, Ugh. So let's walk through how this works. I wanna talk about uh, its strengths, uh, and one of its major strengths is it's easy to use. It's super easy to use. I'll also talk about some of its weaknesses and where it doesn't really work very well. So let's start with the tool itself. And the tool is, um, like I said, in the toolbar, it's the second tool from the left. So we've, we've already used the tool on the left, which is called the uh, crop overlay for cropping the photo. Uh, we're going to go to the next tool over, which is a circle with a right pointing arrow, and we're going to click on that, and you'll see the brush controls underneath that. Um, there are three controls plus two different modes. We'll get into the modes in a second. So the controls are brush size, which is pretty easy to understand. Um, that's how big the brush is. Um, easy, here's a pro tip for you. You can change the brush size 
with the scroll wheel on your mouse. So if, um, depending on how your mouse is set up, if I push forward, my uh, brush gets larger. If I pull back, my uh, brush gets smaller. So uh, how big do you want the brush? Uh, in this case, I want it uh, large enough to cover in the width because I'm going to go vertically. So the width of the subject uh, in one single stroke. Um, that'll help minimize it look like uh, it'll help hide what I, the edit I'm trying to make. Uh, in this case, I'm at about 80 for my brush size. The next control down is called feather and that is how soft the edge of the brush is and that's denoted by that second circle, that outer circle that's a little lighter. Uh, as you look at your brush, I'll put it here in the darker part so you can see it. So that inner circle is the brush itself and the outer circle is the soft edge. Um, I usually leave the feather at 50, five, zero. Uh, I find that's for most of the edits I make a good value. It helps hide the brush, but it's not so soft that you have to work really, really hard. Uh, if you go with a feather of zero, that means it's a hard edge. A feather of 100 means it's a very, very soft edge. I like 50. It's middle. Middle is often good. Um, and then opacity is uh, as you brush, uh, how much of what was originally there is covered by the brush. Uh, so when you're at 100 opacity, that means the brush is completely replacing what was originally there. And again, most of the time I leave that at 100. I completely want to replace, I want to completely replace what was originally there. So here's how this tool works. Um, just a little Lightroom history for you. This tool was added, I think around version three or four of Lightroom. Uh, so it wasn't part of the original interface. So it's not the most beautiful <laughs> way to work, but it gets the job done. And like I said, it's easy and fast. Here's how I use the tool. So I find the object I want to replace and I put my cursor, my mouse, my brush, uh, in this case above. I'm going to start from the top and just work straight down. My brush is wide enough to be slightly larger than the area I'm trying to replace. So see how this is uh, wider than that buoy. I've got a little bit on the left and right. I'm also going to start slightly above and when I finish, I'll finish slightly below. What that does is including the surrounding areas gives this enough uh, information to help it compute how to replace what was underneath, how to do its magic. So here we go. We're going to click. I'm just above. I'm clicking, holding my mouse button down, and then brushing by pulling straight. I'm ish down, straight ish down. So it's going to leave a white line in this case, a big white blob. So I can't see what's underneath. So you kind of have to remember what was there and kind of guess a little bit. Once you're done, let go. And Lightroom is going to automatically pick a source area to use to replace what was underneath. So nice and easy, right? Except every once in a while, Lightroom is kind of silly and picks a weird source like this. If it does that, we can move it. So I here. So let's talk about what these. Let's give a little uh, vocabulary here. Where I brushed is called the target. The target. The point. To, so you can see there's a uh, an arrow pointing at that. The arrow. The area that Lightroom is sampling from is called the source. Okay, so the source, and if I, if I don't like the source that Lightroom automatically picked, I can move it by simply clicking on that dot in the middle, that gray pin, black dot, and move it until I like the way the replacement looks. So watch the preview you're getting until you don't see any patterns, it looks invisible. So it looks like that thing was never there and you didn't replace it with something else. Okay, when you're done, let go. So easy, 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 easy. This is so nice and simple to use. I really encourage you to use this when there's distractions, things that are pulling your mind and your eye away from what you want people to see in the image, okay? Let's talk about the limits of this tool, the um, weaknesses, if you will. So um, 
limit number one is wherever you draw, so when you sprayed, when well I sprayed, you brushed with the tool, you created a shape. The source is exactly the same size, shape, and orientation. So it's a duplicate, it's a clone of that original target, which means um, you need, it'll, it'll line up exactly the same. So if something's at an angle, you need to find the same angle of, for replacement. Uh, if it's a very large area, you need to have a large sample to replace. That will that'll do the replacement well, and I'll show you that in the next image. Um, the other weakness of this tool is it doesn't do well where there's really high contrast, and that's usually where edges meet. Let me give you an example. So down here, let's say you found this uh, cleat, which is the, where you tie off the rope for a boat. Uh, distracting. You want to get rid of it. I just want it to look like there's nothing here. It's just water. Um, you can do it, it's hard, but if I just try the quick version, uh, so I just do a quick draw, so I, my brush is still bigger than the object, I've covered it completely. It's Lightroom's trying to find a good source and it's not doing well. And you might think, oh, go over to her be, uh, behind the, uh, the, the lady on the dock. And you would go over here and you would try and, oh, okay, I can get it to line up, but I don't have a big enough area there. It's Remember this target and source are the same size and shape. Also because the the, uh, the tones are different, uh, you get this weird um, color change and brightness change. So uh, if you did it in enough little bits and pieces, you can maybe get it to work. But uh, my experience is stuff like this is more of a pain to get rid of in Lightroom with this tool than it's worth, okay? So spot removal, distraction removal. Here's where we started, big distraction, it's gone. Super easy, it takes about 10 seconds, and there you go. Uh, the way this tool works is um, every time you click, uh, you're drawing a new uh, brush. Like let's say uh, I wanted to, there's a little dark spot right there. Let's say I wanna get rid of that. So I can just click and brush and uh, get rid of that. You wanna be careful of repeating patterns like in the water here. It doesn't work very well because there's this repeating pattern. Uh, let's see if I can do this a little better. Let's start over, make it a little bigger. Sometimes you have to replace more than you think you wanna replace. And sometimes it doesn't, the original was not as bad as you thought, like right here. You got some smudging going on. Edges are a little tough sometimes. I'm just gonna leave it. Um, so this tool works best on um, organic, non-repeating patterns. So like the water here, where I was trying to replace it, where it was a repeating pattern, it didn't work very well. Uh, it works great on water, on trees, you know, foliage, uh, wo uh, wood textures with non-repeating patterns, clouds, sky. Uh, it doesn't work well on like a, a geometric brick wall because it's hard to line up those patterns exactly because you're kind of doing exact size shape copy. So uh, let's go to this photo and uh, show you a couple things. Um, I wanna show you what this tool was originally designed for and something I hope you'll also use it for. And that is what this tool was originally designed for was it's called the spot removal tool because uh, in cameras, uh, our digital cameras will get um, so oftentimes little specks of dust or other spots on the sensor and uh, they show up in photos, like especially in the sky. It's like if you have a blue sky like I do here, up in the top left corner, those are sensor dust spots. Here, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. So up here, oops. Um, zoom in a little more there we go so these are sensor spots these little circles they're usually circles because their dust is often round sometimes they're bigger if it's a, a little group of spots so i'm going to get rid of those i want to get rid of those so i've previously and there's a bunch of them look at all of them there's about eight of them in this photo so um 
I'm going to get rid of them. And rather than brushing like I did on the previous photo, I'm just going to do a single click and it'll just do a circle spot like a stamp replacement. So I don't need it to be very large for this operation. So I'm just going to click there to get rid of that and there and there and there. Uh, there, there's a couple over here. So I'm just doing quick clicks and, and Lightroom usually does a pretty good job of replacement on these of uh, the source with the target. Um, so there we go. Uh, ooh, there's a couple more. I always miss a couple on this. <laughs> anyway, um, so you've got all these little spots on your screen and that's how the, this interface works is wherever you've, um, just clicked, it'll leave that circle behind. And the circle that's left behind is where you clicked. And if you put your mouse over it, it'll show the connected circle, which is what it was the source for replacement. Okay, I know this interface is a little confusing. Up here in the top left and on the top right, I've got those tree branches, which are distractions because they're, they're not big enough to look intentional. They look, unfortunately, like accidental inclusion, included elements. Uh, so I want to get rid of them and I can very, very easily. Um, I mentioned a while back when we first started Lightroom that oftentimes I will, as I'm taking photos, be aware of what I can do in Lightroom and take my photo with Lightroom in mind. This is a good example of that. When I was looking up at, at taking this building, I, I, I wish the trees weren't there, but obviously I couldn't move them. I like the composition, but I remembered I can get rid of those trees in Lightroom. So we're going to get rid of them uh, with a quick click and brush up here. And see where it sampled? It sampled a little bit of this, um, uh, what's it called? Lens flare. I don't want that. So I'm just going to go over here to the empty sky. I'm going to talk about lens flare and why I'm not removing it in a moment. Uh, let's go up, go up here and uh, I'm going to give you a tip for using this tool on a large area uh, where you're trying to cover a large area and I can't just do a single brush stroke in either direction. So here's how you do that. So I, I go with a big brush. What am I at here? What size is my brush? It's whatever size that is. Um, 81, I guess. So I'm just going to click and hold and I'm going to brush and make sure I cover the area plus a little bit. So it looks like it's all covered, right? Probably isn't. I probably didn't overlap quite. So I'm just going to go back into the middle and even off to the edges on top and the right and just make sure I cover, kind of like when you mow a lawn or you paint a wall, you, you make sure you overlap. So I've got that. I'm going to click and let go. I mean, let go of the click. And Lightroom is going to go sample that. And it does a pretty good job. It's, it's smudged a little bit up here. It's a little dark. Let's see if I can... Sometimes if you move the source, uh, the target, I mean. Oops, where'd it go? I made it worse. By the way, uh, Lightroom's doing a ton of math with this. So um, sometimes you have to wait. Like if you move this, it has to recalculate and it, it has to pause. Now this smudge is still there, so I'm gonna delete this and try it again. I'm gonna go with a little bit smaller brush. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a little bit uh, on brush size and brush technique, I'll say. So I think I covered too much with that. That was the problem. So there we go, there we go. That's better. Oh, it's still got the smudge. Why does it still have the smudge, Michael? It usually doesn't have the smudge. Let's try it one more time. So you can be amazed. This time I'm trying kind of like circle loopy, I'm doing like this motion with the mouse. Usually this works just fine. There we go, that's pretty good. All right, cool. All right, so why didn't I get rid of those lens flares and these uh, down here on the building? Uh, these I could probably get rid of, although it's a little tricky here because you've got um, some very subtle changes that if you interrupt it, it's going to be visible. Uh, here on the building, the reason I'm not doing it is because um, it's intersecting at a perspective angle on the building with some lines on it, and, and it's going one direction, and I don't have a source that's also going in that same direction in the same orientation and same perspective. So if I try and get rid of this, here, let's just do it real quick. 
if I just try and get rid of this, you can see one, it's not a very precise tool. So I don't, I'm, I, I'm always drawing a circle. So I can't really do a rectangle or a four-sided object shape. So it, it grabbed from over here and you can see the lines are going in a different direction. If I go up here, it's not big enough. And plus the color and, uh, and uh, other elements around it change. Over here, it's the wrong direction. Uh, this is the right tones, but again, wrong direction. The, or, the, uh, uh, the source material underneath is pointed in a different direction and perspective. So sometimes, if you don't know Photoshop, you just leave it and you live with it. I kind of like the lens flare, I don't mind it. So that is uh, spot removal, using it to get rid of sensor dust spots, uh, also using it to get rid of a couple of distractions in the corner. We're gonna do one more spot removal photo. This photo, student working at the laptop in the student union building. Um, I'm gonna remove uh, three distractions in this photo with this method. So distraction number one that I'm gonna get rid of, actually there's four. Uh, on his laptop, there's the HP logo and a little Google Chrome logo. Uh, we've got over here, we got the light switch, and then we've got this uh, um, board, these lines, these dark lines. All those things are contrasting from what's around it, so they grab your attention. Think of anything that contrasts as potential distractions. So let's do the easy one first, which is the uh, uh, light switch over here on the wall. Uh, it's interrupting that uh, empty blank wall. So if we get rid of it and return the wall to emptiness, it'll help you concentrate on the student and his very intent look here. So I'm gonna make a brush that's just bigger than the, uh, the switch and do a single click. And because this wall is just a solid color pretty much, easy, easy. Laptop, I'm gonna do the HP logo. Uh, if it was an Apple logo, I would also do that just from a distraction standpoint. Um, also licensing maybe. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna click here on the HP. Notice I made my cursor, the brush a little smaller. I'm using my scroll wheel again on my mouse. I'm gonna go smaller again for the, H, uh, the uh, Google Chrome thing up here. I'm gonna click and draw a little brush here. Sometimes I go left to right, sometimes I go right to left. So now we got rid of the light switch, uh, the two logos on the laptop, and lastly, I'm gonna do these, um, these lines on the wall. So here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it rather than doing kind of an upside down U shape with a single up and over and down, or uh, over, up and down, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna do it in three separate brushes because I can control it better. And you have to be a little careful here because of the smudgies I mentioned. So um, you remember the smudgies, right? All right. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start on the left-hand one and click, hold, and pull down. Um, and I'm gonna stop just above that red chair. And I'll show you why I did that. So it does a nice uh, replacement here. Um, if I had continued down just a little bit further, that's the smudge I'm talking about. It looks like the chair is on fire. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna click and hold again and move that source uh, target up, uh, the source target, excuse me, the target up just a little bit so that disappears. I'm gonna come over here and do the uh, other side. Click, hold, drag, and pull down. Um, and just get close. Again, that did a good job. Now, here's the trick with this. The, again, the way this interface works is you're always in add a new brush mode uh, until you click on a brush, I mean, one of the existing strokes, and then try and edit it. So normally I start left to right, right to left, whatever but I can't because there's two brush strokes already there. So if I try and click over here and brush from left to right, I'm clicking on an existing one, so it changed to the edit tool. So I'm just gonna split the difference and I'll start in the middle and I'll go left and right. So I'm gonna click in the middle and go one direction, one go the other direction. So even though I'm still hitting those existing brushes because I'm in brush mode, it doesn't activate them. I know it's a little tricky interface. You can do it though. All right, click, hold, let go. Boom, uh, distractions removed. 
When you're all done with the tool, uh, click on the done button. You can click on the tool icon again, that will turn it off. And look at what we did. That's kind of like Photoshop inside a Lightroom. Kind of cool, kind of cool. Uh, you know, you might think these newspapers find them distracting. I know that I can't get rid of them using this tool again because of size, shape, orientation limits, uh, the edges, the lack of precision with the tool. So I'll settle for those kind of easy targets of uh, distractions that really draw your eye. I think the newspapers kind of add a little um, context for what he's doing. So there we go. So that's a quick run through of the uh, spot removal tool. I like to call it the distraction removal tool. Uh, really powerful, I encourage you to use it. I expect you to use it. Uh, if there's distractions in your photos that you can get rid of with this, do it, do it. And oftentimes, uh, here's a great example of when people should use it. Uh, I get lots of flower photos, uh, except in winter quarter. But, uh, and then, so you're looking down on the flower and there's the background behind it. Oftentimes in the background behind the flower, there's junk. Uh, sometimes it's twigs or weeds or even candy wrappers. S try spot removal and see if you can get rid of those things. Uh, if you have a picture of the sky, uh, make sure there's no spots in the sky. You want to get rid of those things as well. If you have questions on all these, uh, how this works, uh, do let me know. Send me uh, uh, an email. Visit me during Zoom online office hours or uh, join the discussion group for this class. Leave a comment, leave a suggestion, and uh, share what you know or share your concerns. So uh, in the video coming up, we're going to do some painting with color, light. Basically, we're going to paint with the basic panel in the next video after this. See you there.